Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Talladega Super Speedway. Tonight, the TDR BladeNode.com Premier Cup Series Noble 5 takes on this treacherous 2.66 mile Super Speedway. Five drivers will walk away with money out of 13 that donated in. I am Joe Twansky. Alongside me is Alex Gordon. How are you doing, Gordo? Doing pretty good, man. Uh, looking forward to some Super Speedway racing tonight. Uh, I'm really excited to see how this Noble 5 promotion plays out a lot of money on the line tonight so uh you're gonna see some guys take some chances and some guys make some moves that they normally wouldn't make because the money is on the line it's all about the benjamins joe all about them benjamins and tonight is the conclusion of segment one for the tdr premier cup series of which we have three drivers tied coming into this race for that segment one championship with randall coleman and robert balcom behind so, to start out, I'm going to show you the money. With the the Noble program here at TDR, the payouts for the drivers, it's an $185 purse. If a Noble driver wins the race, first place will get $100, second place will get $50, third will get $25, fourth and fifth will both receive $5. How does that sound? Sounds like a heck of a payday right there. Now... If a Noble driver is not fortunate enough to win the race, the payouts change a little bit for them. The, the top Noble driver will get $75, the second place Noble driver will get $50, third will get $30, fourth will get $20, and fifth will get $10. So, if you're that fifth Noble guy, or even that fourth Noble guy, you're definitely hoping that the winner is not part of the Noble program tonight. Yeah, that's, that's going to uh, create a really interesting ele uh, element to this whole thing. I mean, and we're at the ultimate wild card track. Talladega, you've seen a lot of first-time winners, a lot of guys that would normally not be a factor in these races coming towards the front. So it's very likely that a non-Noble 5 driver wins tonight. Uh, so, yeah, I think if, if you're a guy that, that maybe gets caught up in an incident or you're not really towards the front and can't make any move, you're rooting for that non-Noble 5 guy to win it tonight. More money in your pocket. Now, we've talked about the Noble, but let's tell you who is participating in tonight's event. Those drivers are now going to be appearing on your screen. They are the 03 of James Moore, the 9 of Randall Coleman, the 15 of Matt Watkins, the 18 of Robert Balcom, the 20 of Doug Lockrow, the 21 of Craig Meyer, the 22 of Gary Piccolo, the 28 of Austin Hakes, the 33 of Jeffrey Goodpaster, 43 of Bobby Farrell, the 47 of Andrew Miller, and the 98 of Mike Wiley as the drivers get called to their cars for qualifying. Now, out of these drivers, who do you think has the best chance of winning all the money? Well, I'm going to be completely honest with you here, Joe. Uh, there's a lot of these names on here that I have not raced with before. Um, I, Randall Coleman and Austin Hakes are guys that I've, I've run plenty of laps with and and I know their their abilities in the super speedway settings, um, so I'm going to look for one of those two to possibly win it. You know, if not finish up in the top three. Um, I did see a lot of speed out of the 20 of of Lock Rowe and and uh, the the 21 of Craig Meyer and the 22 of Gary Piccolo uh, in practice. I think if those three can get hooked up, they're going to be a, a factor in this race. Um, plus, you know, the piccolo is my favorite instrument. So if, if it's a great instrument, it means he's probably a great super speedway racer. So I think it's, it's going to be a good time tonight. Uh, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of big names in this field. And I definitely could see a noble five driver winning this thing. Now in the event that a noble five driver does not win, obviously the payday goes up for everyone, except for that upper half. If you're, say, running 5th or 6th, you're the Noble, you're also running 5th or 6th out of the... You're, you're, you can, are you going to push a guy that isn't a Noble guy, or are you going to push a guy that's also competing for the money tonight? Oh, absolutely. I'm pushing a guy that's not competing for the money, because if you don't think that you have a chance to win this, why would you sit back and, and let a Noble guy win, and your payday goes from getting your money back, whereas if you push that non-Noble 5 guy, if he happens to win it, your, your payday doubles, if not quadruples. So, I mean, it, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of risk reward there. Um, but yeah, if I'm that guy that's, that's out of the running as far as a noble five guys, and I see a guy's got a chance to win it, that's not in it. Heck yeah. I'm pushing them to the win. Now 
We have the theory of teammates in the Noble Five as well. The, you mentioned the 20, the 21, and the 22. Those three are all forward racing and team teammates. You also have the 9 and the 18 that are teammates. How are you going to work with your teammates when you're also competing for such a big prize tonight? Well, uh, you know, it, it's going to create a, a, an interesting dynamic to this race. Um, you know, obviously it benefits the, the team if you uh, work together and, and fill out the top two or top three spots. Um, and there could be a a an agreement between the teammates that, you know, if they if they pull the money together and then split it evenly, you never know. That could be a thing that they could do as well. So um, I, I think you're going to see guys – I think pride's going to take over at some point. You're going to see guys ditch teammates for the win, but you never know. There could be deals already made beforehand to where these guys will split the money evenly, and they may work as a team. You won't know until we get to that final lap. That's when when you're going to see the the desperation moves kick up and where Talladega really gets its its uh its image from. Well, and really, this race is relatively short, only 76 laps, which can be a long time at Talladega if we have if we see a lot of cautions but these laps can go by pretty quickly when you're making moves so just as quick on the racetrack yeah they're i mean they're they're ticking off pretty fast lap times you know so you figure this this should be i mean barring any sort of caution periods which let's be honest we'll probably get some caution periods we should get this race in and and just under an hour and a half if it goes green the whole way uh but with that being said there's going to be cautions. There's going to be guys that make moves that they normally wouldn't make. And that's where this Noble 5 promotion really picks up a notch and, and brings out the extra aggression in these drivers. They all want to win. They all want the big payday. And now qualifying is over. Yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like Ricky Johnson's on the pole there. He got it by three thousandths of a second. So congrats to him. He'll lead the field to green tonight. Um, but again, that, that reoccurring thing that I talked about earlier, Gary Piccolo and Craig Meyer, second and third. So definitely look for those two to get hooked up early and try to try to assert their dominance. Well, and they're followed by Austin Hakes, who is also, those three are also tied for the points lead going into this final race of the segment. So it's going to be a very interesting race off a of pit road throughout the event and a you know, they're starting near each other. If there's an early caution that starts at the front of the field, those three could all be taken out and open the door for one of our other points contenders as well. Right, and just in case there wasn't already enough drama on the line with the money, yeah, you talk about it, the points uh, situation. You got the three guys tied for the lead. Randall Coleman not out of it. He could get back in it with a win. I mean, it's 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 crazy to think that here we are with all this money on the line. And oh, by the way, there's a championship on the line too. And as you see, we are watching the 22 of Gary Piccolo on the bottom of your screen throughout tonight's event. You will see all of the numbers for the Noble Five drivers. That way, if you're joining us or you're throughout the you're joining us throughout the race, we'll be able to keep you updated, and you'll be able to look at our ticker at the top of the screen to see how that race within the race is playing out. Yeah. I'm uh I'm I'm not I'm not gonna get off of my my high horse on on that three car tandem of the 2021 and 22. I think they're gonna be the ones to look out for tonight. Um, they they seem to work the best together, and I just don't see where anybody's gonna be able to match up to them speed wise tonight. Well, I mean we've seen how many times here at Talladega where teammates mean a lot. I. We can go back to Tuesday night's race in the uh, the Dash series. You, Austin, and Michael Murata worked so well together. And, yep. I mean, talk about that, even. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Tuesday night we uh, we raced here. And um, pretty much from the get-go, um, we we asserted a plan where uh, we were going to we were gonna run uh, in a line and work together no matter where we went. Uh, we made some moves that nobody else would would want to make because they they just didn't they didn't trust working with each other as much as me, Mikey, and and Austin did, and it paid off. Mikey got the W on Tuesday night. He drove one heck of a race. Uh, Austin and I were right there to uh, to push him along the way, and uh, but he got it done in the end. He did a great job, and and that makes him another guy to look out for tonight. I mean, you 
there's a lot of guys that you'll you're gonna see get, have a chance to to win this race tonight, and it's just gonna come down to making the right moves at the right time. Um, if you get the momentum with the draft, you know, finding somewhere to go with those runs and not letting them stall out. Um, it, it, there's a lot of things that factor into racing at Talladega or Daytona for that matter um, that, that these guys are going to have to use tonight to their advantage and really ha- going to have to drive a smart race to A, make it 76 laps, and then B, try to be there at the finish. Yeah, I, I, it's going to be a very interesting race. We have three races going on tonight, the battle for the points championship, the noble battle, and then the battle just to win this race. As there are many drivers making their first, second, third start in the series this season. One of those is obviously Michael Murata. You also have uh, some other guys that haven't, you know, raced as often in this series. As well as a lot of guys that are maybe starting to try to build momentum for segment two, which starts next week at Dover. Sure, and, and like I said, this is an ultimate wild card race. It's an opportunity race. You know, this is this is a race where your guys that don't normally run towards the front look at this race on their schedule and think to themselves, hey, we've got a chance to turn our seasons around. We have our chance to pick up a W. Uh, you know, it's 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 not uncommon for a guy that everybody overlooks week in and week out to pull in a victory lane at Talladega. Um, so, again, it, it's just going to come down to who drives a smart race, who can keep their car in one piece for 76 laps tonight, and whoever does it the best is going to walk out of here with a trophy and possibly a whole bunch of money in their pocket. And again, it will be very interesting to see how that Noble race plays out with so much money on the line. We have to obviously applaud uh, TDR for pulling this promotion together, for pulling us in to broadcast tonight's event. And we are really excited to bring you guys this fantastic race here at the Talladega Super Speedway. Yeah, I, I definitely want to want to thank you, Joe, for asking me to be on board and, um, and you know, fill the cast and everybody on board with this. Um, They've done a great job, like you said, promoting this event, pulling in a, a really hefty prize fund for an NR2003 race. Um, you know, I want everybody to know that people keep saying that NR is on its last leg. Well, I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, it's got a great community, a strong community, and if we can keep getting fields like this, I don't see NR2003 NR going anywhere anytime soon. So, again, thank you so much for this opportunity, and I look forward to a great race tonight. No problem, man. That's I'm just, I like I said, it, I, I have to thank you, obviously, for being here, for coming on with us. And, you know, you've done a, such a great job with us at Dover for the Dash Series. And just always a fun time when we are up here in the booth. This happy hour is coming to a conclusion. Are you excited, oh. Joe? I'm getting a little excited, man. <laughs> I'm excited. And then I got those driver nerves in my stomach, you know. Talladega is always excited for Talladega. You're also a little nervous. You got all them emotions. Yeah, I was just, I was going to ask you. I mean, what what goes through your mind when you when you're getting ready to race at Talladega? Like what what's going through your mind, Joe? Cuz I'll be honest with you. Like you said, it's it's a mix of emotions. You're on one hand, you know it's an opportunity to win a race, and on the other, man, you just know that there's a very good chance that something that's out of your control is going to take you out of this thing. So, I mean, what's your mindset going into these kinds of races? Well, especially with it being a winner-take-all type of event, I've only ever been in one of those races here at Talladega. And to toot my own horn a little bit, I won it. But throughout that entire race, you know, you have the stomach, your stomach's churning, you know, from start to finish. As the laps start clicking down, you, you start to worry more and more about cars getting runs either to the inside, outside, you if they're going to run you over at times, you know? Yeah. And then you also have to, it, it goes through your mind when you got a different guy that's coming up behind you. Is this guy going to run me? Is, is he going to push me or is he going to try to take that run, especially early on in a race, you know, cause early on for a lot of these guys, they're definitely going to want to take it easy if they got so much on the line. Yep. That was yeah. a really long response. <laughs> no, and, and, and you're completely right. You, you're you're not saying anything that I don't agree with. Um, trust is a huge thing with super speedways. You gotta you gotta really trust that if you pull out to make the move to you know either pass for the lead or pass for fifth, whatever position it is, you have to trust that the guy behind you is gonna go with you because if you don't, you're getting drop kicked to the back. And all that work that you made, or all that work that you did to get that progress through the field. 
it's done. You're out. Like you gotta, you gotta start all over again. And um, yeah, trust is huge on these super speedways. You gotta trust yourself, trust your instincts, and trust the guys around you. And sometimes one of those three isn't there, and that's when the when it leads to to either big wrecks or, like I said, you get drop kicked to the back. So um, they're gonna as the cars start rolling off pit road. I'm excited, Joe. It's gonna be a great race. It's gonna be a fantastic race. We'll start going through your field here. Hopefully, get through about top ten, top fifteen. We'll keep on going until we get to the green flag. On the pole is Ricky Johnson in the 193. To his outside is the 22 of Gary Piccolo. Craig Meyer starts third in the 21, followed by Austin Hakes in the 28. In the 388 is Dan Lavelle, followed by Blake McCandless in the 166. Greg Lavelle is in the 088, following McCandless. And then it is the 18 of Robert Baucom, the 16 of Kyle Lawson, and then the trying to see here. We're all it's kinds 16 of, of Mikey Murata. 16 of Mikey Murata. Yep. <laughs> the different number tonight. Yep. And then the 9 of Randall Coleman. The 028. Fall. Actually, the 97 of Perry Bone will be starting 12th tonight. <laughs> you take it away. <laughs> oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, so in, the, in, uh, in, in row 7 on the inside, you got the 028 of Monty Keller. On the outside there, the 021 of Kelly Horner. Inside, you've got Ryan Johnson in the 59. Outside, you got the 110 of Terry Bombard. 37th, 33 of Jeff, Jeff Goodpaster. 18th, 37 of Sp Spadafora. 19th, Cody Luke in the 8th. 20th, Doug Lockrow. Another guy I could see getting towards the front tonight. 21st, one of your Noble 5 guys, the 03 of James Moore. 22nd, the 78 Aaron Johnson. 20, 23rd, the 3 caller of Bill Murnahan. 24, another Noble 5 guy, Bill, or, uh, Mike Wiley. 25th, the 43 of Bobby Farrell. 26, 52. And then from there on, you got guys that did not qualify. Shane Sides, Ken, uh, Patton, and Ken Hansen. Keith Patton, excuse me. Round out your field. As the cars bring it around to the start-finish line. That start-finish line is not in the tri-oval this evening. Ricky Johnson will lead them through the restart zone. You'll hear these... Motors fire off. Green flag is in the air. We are underway racing at the Talladega Super Speedway. This is going to be a key to this race is how everybody gets through these gears on these restarts. Not just the initial start, but any restart we have tonight. Any any sort of gear shift mishap, you're going to see yourself lose all your momentum and you're going to be a set and duck. So shifting through these gears is going to be another key thing that these drivers are going to have to think about as they get through these restarts. Well, and you're already seeing this inside line is starting to form up very well, and the outside's kind of struggling to get cars. Everyone trying to get to the bottom as it's the sh uh, the shortest way around this speedway. Yeah, it's definitely a, a good move early on when you when you're you know when the engines aren't full sound, but as soon as the engines get wound up, as oh we got one getting sideways off of four, he's around on the inside. I don't know if it's going to bring out a caution. Looks like it's oh it's Noble Five contender Mike Wiley already in trouble. Wiley already in trouble. No caution on the speedway. He'll, he'll get it fired back up. Hope for a quick yellow to get him back up with the field. But Rick Johnson continues to lead, followed by the 21 of Craig Meyer. Okay. Not sure what happened there to Wiley. Looked like he might have just gotten a little out of control off the corner. I'm not sure if he had any help, but he gets it fired. He's going through the, the tribal, heading to the start-finish line. Um, uh, what I was saying about the inside line, uh, it's great when you first get started, but as soon as these engines get wound up, the outside line, if they can stay formed, they will pull the momentum off the corners and pull even with this inside line. As you see the pack of cars rounding out of turn four, it is really a sight to see all of these race cars on the track. As you said, NR2003 always said to be on its last leg, but I don't see that happening this evening. No, I, like I said, you, you, you've got a you've got a great field tonight. Uh, a lot of a lot of good names in this field. Um, so I can I don't I don't understand why people think this sim's going to die. Um, you know, as long as we keep having big fields and, and quality racers, uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. So we are on lap three. Hunt, yep, yep, hunt down the back stretch here. Looks like the outside line starting to pull even here with the with the inside line at the front. Oh, oh, we got one oh two big noble wreck. can big that's wreck. wreck. That's gonna be half the field right there. Huge wreck. <laughs> Looks Massive like it's more wreck. than half the field. 
That was a massive wreck, and that's the caution that Mike Wiley needed. He did just lose a lap, but he, he gets the caution he needed here as we're going to have to try to re-rack the field to see who's left after this. Looks like the, the nine of Randall Coleman, he was definitely involved. I think it started with two of our championship contenders, it looked like. Yeah, let's let's back that up because I see the 22 is big time junked on the inside. Yeah, he's he was second car in line. Looks like uh, it looks like a bad bump. Yeah, it looks I don't know if that was net code or or a bad bump, but it looked like the 28 got into the back end of the 22. And from there, it was just mass calamity. As you'll see your replay here. 28, yep, just got into the back of the 22, sent them both around. Hard impact for both of those cars. The 28 went up and on his roof. People, Everyone just piling in. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, all right. I was... I was gonna throw some, some. I was gonna throw some shade there, Joe. I'm not gonna lie, but now I see what happened, so I can't. I can't say anything. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, when the track gets clogged up like that, there's not a lot that you can do. And um, yeah, that was unfortunate for all the drivers involved, and took out quite a few of your Noble Five contenders as well. As we'll go on board with the 28 through the corner, you're gonna see he's just gonna tap the 22 at just the wrong second. I don't know if. Maybe the 22 checked up a bit, or... Yeah, when I when I watch that back, it looks like the, the leader on the outside line, who I believe was the 21, if I'm not mistaken, um, he gets a little bit... Like, he... I don't know. I, I really can't tell. It almost almost looks like there's a little bit of a shifting in the line, and the, 20, the 21 was doing all he could, stay in front of the 22, and... 22 moved up a little bit, and the 28 kind of filled the hole, and it was on from there. But I don't know. Like I said, it's just typical Talladega things. You Everything happens so quick, and once the track gets clogged up, there's nothing these drivers can do but hold on. Well, and you can kind of see this as we look from our camera on top of the grandstand. You kind of see that momentum just all of a sudden stall out with the 21 and 22. and There's just yep. nowhere to go at that point. Yeah, that was just a, a typical... Talladega accordion effect right there, and then, like I said, these these guys come off the corner. The the, the track tightens up off of the off of four and off of two, and you know when you've got cars wrecking on the outside line, and your car naturally wants to drift up the track. There's just nowhere for these guys to go. And just a, really a series of un unfortunate events for these drivers. Obviously, a lot of noble contenders taken out early. Do we have a tally on who was? Well, uh, I can tell you the 9 was definitely uh, involved in that. The 22 was definitely involved. The 28 was involved. Um, trying to go through here and see who else would have been. Bobby Farrell was oh, Bob, Bobby Farrell was done. His, his evening is finished. The 9, um, you see him sitting on pit road. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's repairing or if, if he... I, wouldn't, I would imagine his car's done for and his night's over um yeah that was just a really bad wreck a lot of big hits there and you know unfortunate for for the guys that were in the, the noble five chase night their their uh, chance for a, a good payday goes out the window five laps in this event so just a but again that's typical talladega things you you, you got guys making moves that they normally wouldn't make and and uh this is what happens i mean and not and i'm not putting any blame on anybody there that was just a just, just a, a a series like you said a series of unfortunate events and yeah, it's something that happens here at talladega the big one can strike at any time and tonight it decided to strike early so we pace the field on lap six of 76 we're having some technical difficulties with the lap counter like to apologize for that. I believe I'm, I'm looking on pit road here. Um, I think Mike Wiley should be the lucky dog once this thing goes back green. So, uh, like I said, a big break for him. Um, depending on whether or not he got damaged in his in his single car incident earlier. Um, he should be back on the lead lap, and and now all of a sudden he goes from 
you know, in the doghouse now he's he's you know sitting pretty here with all these other noble, noble five guys in this incident. Yeah, it looks like the twenty one is still out there. The thirty three. Mm-hmm. Um. Yep, the O three is currently leading. So, or I'm sorry, he's not leading. He is. Well, he was leading. He's there. still he out the there. Trailer. Okay, he's still yeah, he's still running. He still has a race car. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how the how the rest of this race plays out with so many big names uh, being taken out in that in that incident. Um, and again, I I I have to mention it's an opportunity race. You know, you got guys up there now that maybe going into the night didn't think they had a chance for a top five, top ten, and and now, all of a sudden, they've got a chance to win this thing. Is uh, the 89 car currently, or the 98 currently scored a lap down? Uh, he is right now, but he should be the lucky dog. Okay. Do you see cars pitting here? This should be our, we should be getting one to green as we come to complete lap six. The 109 pitting. 33, the 43 and 9 still sitting on Pitt Road. Yep. Or just yeah, the 43. Some, and some of these guys may be topping off their fuel. Uh, something I didn't touch on earlier, the fuel window tonight is going to be between 20, 27 to about 28 laps. Probably somewhere around there. Um, and so these guys can come in and top off and, and you know definitely make this a two-stop race. Um, tires aren't going to be much of an issue tonight. With it being a super speedway, there's a lot of grip out there. So, you know, unless you skid them trying to to avoid a wreck or, or spin out or, you know, skid them trying to get on pit road, uh, you shouldn't be at a premium for tires tonight. Yeah. I mean, we're, what, we'll be looking at through two stops or three stops? I'm uh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking two. Two? Yeah. Um, yeah, if you figure a fuel fuel window, if it's if it's a twenty eight laps, that puts you at twenty eight fifty six, and then they wouldn't have to pit again from there. Um, now, granted, you know there will be guys that go a little off sequence, and they might pit under these cautions to try to stretch their fuel window a little bit. But um, as of right now, I mean, it's still a two stop race. Um, but yeah, it, it, that could change as we go along. It just depends on how many cautions we have. These guys can roll around, save a little bit of fuel, possibly top off on the last lap before green, and uh, could potentially turn this into a one-stop race if we have enough cautions. It will be interesting to see the field rolling through three and four. We're going to be coming to green flag on lap eight of our 76. Again, would like to apologize for the ticker in the bottom right-hand corner acting up a little bit. We have IT on that. Pace car pulls off. You see, the 193 of Ricky Johnson will again lead the field back to green. He did well on that first start. Can he maybe improve a little bit on this one? This field comes through the trioval. Long, long wait to get to the restart zone. As they are back underway, green flag is back here at Talladega. A good break from the front, too. There looked like they pulled about even. If you look, you've got about three or four cars lined up on the inside, whereas the outside line only has two cars nose to tail right now. So uh, the inside line should get the run off the corner down the back stretch, and they should they should be able to clear this outside line before we get to three. Well, as I say that, the outside pushes back. Well, it looks like those three on the inside are pretty well locked together. They're doing a good job of you know staying really close but not running into each other. Right. Looks like that six or the one sixteen will try to clear. Yeah, they uh, they might have them. Yeah, they definitely have them clear off four here if they want it. As we get back up to speed here. I, think... I looked and I noticed in our fan questions, uh, we have a we have a question from Spider Trey. He asked, uh, "How many more Quaker State big one of the days are you guys expecting in this race?" Well, <laughs> I would have to say one at this point. Just. Just because we saw so many cars get involved in that first incident, I don't really think there's a lot of cars to have multiple big wrecks left in this race. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one, Joe. I'm thinking maybe one more towards the end, but yeah, it, it's kind of hard to have a big one when you don't have any any cars left. As it looks, um, 
We're getting a pass for the lead, the 388 of Dan Lavelle. Yep, he's making a strong move on the outside. Look, he looks like he's got the 116 hooked up on his on his bumper there. Now the 59 of Ryan Johnson coming back to the 193 of Ricky Johnson. This is where they they need to be careful and be patient. You know, that's what we've 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 seen trouble where there's been bumping in the corners and through the tribal, and that's where a lot of these wrecks are going to happen. Guys getting too aggressive with their bumpers, it knocks the guy out of line. And when you're in front of this many cars, there's just no way you're going to save it. I mean, we saw there, I I didn't quite catch if there was a car, but it looked like there was a car on the apron in the tri-oval. That's a really slick spot on this raceway. And again, you cannot go below that double yellow line to advance your position here at Talladega. Yeah, I believe it was the 37 he has pulled off. Uh, he may or may not have had some mechanical issues, so his day is done. That is very unfortunate. You see this, out, this outside yeah. line's really rolling now. That, Yep. Kind of shocked well, to see. Well, they've got the most cars up there. Um, you know, it's now granted you don't want to have too many cars uh, run single file because it'll bind up the line. That's where you see a lot of accordion effects, like we had in that first caution. But they uh, they've got themselves pretty spaced out right now, and the outside line has more cars hooked up. So uh, I don't I don't see why the outside line wouldn't work right now, and I'm, I'm glad to see somebody has tried it. These inside line guys need to either fall in line with the outside line or if they can get a couple more cars hooked up and maybe start running a little higher line. As, as we say that, the <laughs> outside line just implodes and now everybody's on the inside line. But. You see all the cars coming off of turn four. Yeah, this inside line now has a lot of the momentum. As you see, yeah. the outside only has four cars and you got two and two. You can't really tandem draft with this Gen 6 car. Or really yeah, the, the, in the, the NR bumpers, sim. Yeah, I say the, the bumpers don't don't really line up with the body style and yeah, the NR net code does not uh, allow for, for that tandem draft style to work. Um, you know, as we saw earlier, the net code caused that, that, that really big wreck earlier, so as we gotta move for the lead here. And now the other Lavelle, Greg Lavelle trying to take the lead from the twenty one of Craig Meyer. That was a, a very aggressive move for this early in the race. He he cleared himself off the front end of uh, of Ricky there and uh, made it work, though, as he pushed himself out front. As we are coming to complete lap 12 of this 76-lap event. It's going to be interesting to see if the two Lavelle brothers can get hooked up here. Or if they're going to try to do something like that. Because, again, we were talking earlier about how the 21, 20, and 22 are going to probably work together. And now that plan seems to have gone all right because it's only the, only the 21 that's left. Yeah, and and there's no stronger teammate in your life than families. Oh, we oh. got a bad bump on the back stretch, but what a save by Meyer there. Holy cow, that was almost big one number two of the day. But And well, then the 388 some... makes a pretty aggressive move again. Yeah, that was... Um... That was some. These guys need to realize that this is a 76 lap race. You don't, you can't win on lap 13. So they need to figure out a way to pace themselves here. You know, it doesn't hurt to, to try a couple things to see what you have later in the race. But right now, I, I wouldn't be making those kinds of moves. I'd be just riding it out, let the, the laps wind down, get through a couple pit stops, and you know, wait till there's a handful of laps to go to make your moves. But Doing it right now is just kind of senseless. Well, and of course, as you're saying that as well, we we were three wide for fifth place. Mm -hmm. You see the 16 now getting into that bottom line. It looks like everyone's starting to single out here. Yep, I think they, I think they're realizing that you know you can't win this race on on the you know the 13th or 14th lap. You got to make it to the end. We've already seen one big wreck wipe out most of the field. Uh, you almost had another big wreck there with the 21 getting squirrely off the bump. These guys need to realize they need they need to save their stuff and and you know work together as a as a unit. It sounds it sounds silly, but they need to work together to get to the end here. Well, yeah, we're not even a quarter of the way through the race here. You see the twenty one pulling to the outside. He, he's probably thinking that he wants to get towards the back here. Well, and as I that, say that, yeah, I'll say either that or maybe he's hoping somebody will go with him as a the sixteen and the one sixteen both pull out. Looks like the. O28 is going to kind of hint towards the outside to see if he can poke his nose out there. He's going with them now. So we've got two lines forming again. The, the front two cars have kind of broken away from this pack, though, a little bit. 
It is really interesting to see how the three cars can, those three out front can kind of pull away from this pack. You don't really, you don't see that a lot. Um, well, they've, they've got their, their nose to tail and they're not breaking their line so much, whereas these guys are kind of wavering back and forth, so it's breaking that draft a little bit. It's killing the momentum. So these guys, if they can stay in line and work together, they, uh, the, the, the draft is definitely going to help in their favor as now this outside line is starting to, to train together and they're catching back up to that lead three. Well, and we're already getting really aggressive bumps here. The 16 is on that the bumper of the 21. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't, I, it's, it's, it's easy for me to say up in the booth, but you, you just should not be bumping this early in the race. Um, you're not really accomplishing anything. Well, um, usually this point in the race, as we talked about earlier, I'm riding about three quarters to maybe 80% on throttle, just trying to click laps off and get to the end here, especially after that first incident. Yeah, I, I don't I don't understand the aggression right now. Um, you've got a lot more to lose than you have to gain this early in the race, and you know with this much money on the line, I'd hate to I'd hate to ruin my chance to win some money on lap 17 when I when I could have been there at the end and had a chance to win some money. So, um, you know, that's the other thing we got to think about. I mean, you had I forget how many Noble Five drivers coming in tonight. It could be eliminated down to five just by default if we keep having incidents. And we and might then you, have, then you have nothing to lose at that point. Well, and we talk, we barely got a chance to talk as we're going to get a battle for the lead here. Mm -hmm. But go, coming into this race, there's also a points championship battle. So that went out the window right away because the 21 yep. is really the only one that's in a good position at this point with the uh, 22 and the 28 racking. Yeah, and, and that's where, again, I, if I'm the 21, I'm backing out and getting to the back of this thing because you've pretty much got the championship sewn up at this point. Like, why risk be putting yourself in a position where you could end up on the hauler and, and, and not only losing out a good chunk of money, but also, I mean, I think he's, he still would lock up the championship but or for this, seg for this segment, but I, I don't know. I, I question some logic there. I would just be, I, again, I'd be riding. The only other guy in the Noble 5 up in this pack is the 18 of Robert Balcom. And he's yeah. just behind. So, like, it's not like you're, you know, you're you're not worrying about losing touch with a guy that's maybe leading this pack. It's just another guy that's riding at this point. Yeah, exactly. Um, hey, Joe, I just want to get to some more questions here while they're riding around. Um, looks like, uh... We have a question that says, what effect will track grip play into green flag pit stops today? Will drivers be able to send it in deep, or will they need to worry about sliding the tires? Um, I'll let you answer that one, Joe, if you want. Well, for me, a lot of times coming to pit road, especially at Talladega and Daytona, I'm really, really worried about sliding those tires because I'm coming in to make a pit stop with the mindset that I'm not taking tires. Especially with this small field at this point, I would be taking it super easy coming to pit road, backing kind of when you talk when you talk about a normal track where you're backing up your corners. I'd be backing up that entrance to pit road, worrying about sliding those tires and maybe letting some of these guys throw it into pit road to try to gain some time on me. But I'm I'm taking it really easy just because I don't want to have to change tires when I'm making a pit stop. Right, I I completely agree with you there, Joe and. And the other thing, too, is um, I overheard that the officials are being very, uh, very caught or they're, they're being very aware of drivers pit road speeds. Um, and if, if anybody is caught at least a mile an hour over, uh, they are getting whacked with a speeding penalty. So there again would make me as a driver want to back off that entry of pit road. Make sure you get it down to 55 miles an hour. And that way you don't get you don't get caught by the by the speeding police. Well, and again, you also have to have it when you're coming to pit road. You're going to have to have a game plan in place with some of these other some of your competitors. You know, you want you don't want to come in by yourself, but you also don't want to come oh, yeah. in with everyone else. Yeah, so you, you have, don't want to. You don't want. You don't. You do not want to be the solo duck coming on the pit road. That's for sure. But in my experience, especially with these races here at Talladega and Daytona, you can also lose a race coming to pit road if you don't. If you're not making a stop with people that you trust, with people that know what your style of getting to pit road is, 
if you kind of get get what I'm saying there. Mm -hmm. You know, you, we we talked about trust in the draft. You also have to have trust coming to pit road here, where it's yep. so teamwork orientated. Yeah, looks like the O three is on pit road. Um, he may or may not be serving a penalty. Um, he may have been trying to get off off cycle with the leaders there. Uh, and he's serving a stop and go, so that makes me think he had a speeding penalty on pit road. Tough break for one of the last remaining noble five drivers we have tonight. And you just you hate to see it, you know. Just that early wreck really put a damper on our spirits going into this race. But we've seen some great action, even with a smaller field now at this point. The 193 of Ricky Johnson leads on lap 22 of 76, followed by. The Lavelle brothers, Ryan Johnson, the 59, and Robert Balcom now moving into that top spot out of the Noble 5 drivers. These guys, oh, as we have three cars ducking on the pit road. Here we go. Green flag pit stops are starting. Oh, oh man. 16 and hard in the wall. Hard in the wall. Looks like the 97 may have made some contact with the uh, 59 there as well. I don't know if there's any damage. But, man, a hard lick for, for Mikey there as he was getting on the pit road. And Mikey was our winner on Tuesday night here at Talladega in the Dash Series. And there again, that goes back to what we were just talking about, making sure that you get on a pit road carefully. And uh, big mistake there by the 16. I don't know. His car might be done. That's That was a hard lick in the inside wall. Well, and that's also going to hurt the 59 of Ryan Johnson, who was hoping to have guys coming out of pit road with him. It looks like he will be alone. Oh, here comes the rest of the field ducking on the pit road all together. 18, really aggressive here. It looks like no problems this time coming to pit road. Let's see how this all works out. Now, look, again, we don't know if they're going to take tires or not take tires. It, I don't think it would be beneficial to take tires at this stage in the race. But, you yeah, know, we'll see. Some guys might be on, on different strategies here. So we'll watch Ricky Johnson get down into his stall. You also see Craig Meyer on your screen. Meyer looks. Everyone's taking tires here. Do you think that's just because they're gonna have to take two cans of fuel, or do you think they um, might? Have... As we actually see, a lot of guys only taking two. They're gonna leave Ricky Johnson on pit road by himself. Yeah, and the 028 seems to be having some issues on pit road. I don't know if he slipped through his box or. Oh, he gets. Oh, he got turned. He got spun out by the 116 on pit road. Not sure if there was a miscommunication of where the pit boxes were or um, if if there was the 116 was just ready to go and the 028 was coming in, but... 116 was struggling a bit here on the apron. Yeah, there was definitely contact there on pit road, so that's going to that's gonna hurt the 028's chances of uh, running with this lead pack. He might have to hope for a caution to get back into this thing. As now we are super strung out if we weren't already... Uh, the 088 is probably going to cycle through as our leader. This is the last of the lead lap cars are all going to be coming off a of pit road here. The 109, the 69, and the 166. 028 is struggling on pit road. I don't know if he has a steering column issue or not, but he just drove into the back end of the 9 trying to get out of his pit box. Um, unfortunate to see is he's, he just lost a ton of time on pit road. Oh, it looks like the 93 back on pit road. Could it be a speeding penalty? Well, he looked like he got... And the 088 is also back on pit road. Oh, man. So, two of your top top contenders in this race both having to serve a speeding penalty. And I'll tell you what, that speeding penalty for the 088 is not a laughing matter whatsoever. That's an unfortunate series of events for him. Well, in the 193, another guy is... The caution has come out on the speedway. You see the pace car pulling away. Yeah, let's see if we can figure out. Oh, oh my. Well, we 52, big, big hit. Yeah, 52, Perry Bone in 97. Not sure what has happened there. These guys were running together. As, oh, my. Actually, it started before that. So we'll try to get your replay here. This incident happening on lap 25. I think, I think this actually stemmed from an incident coming off of Pitt Road. Uh, two cars got together. It looks like it was the 028 of Monty Keller. And the, what looks like the 109 of Ken Hansen. And then, I'm not, I'm not sure what the call would happen after that. I'm going to call it some witchcraft from there, but. It looks like the 52 had a transponder issue and just kind of. 
I'm not sure what on earth just happened on the backstretch there, but that was... It just looked silly, was, man. That was wild. Um, and you hate it for Perry Bowen. I mean, he was... He was he come off pit road. He had a good clean pit stop, and next thing you know, you end up with a race car inside of you. I just I don't I don't know. I've as we'll go to our Scott's turf builder on board here on the ninety seven car. Let's try to see what happens with the fifty two. Yeah, the fifty two just disappears, and then... yeah, I, it's just I'll all call, over. I'll, I'll let you call that one, Joe. I don't I don't know what to call that one. <laughs> Witchcraft, uh, as I mean, as it's known, Talladega is built on an ancient exactly, burial ancient ground. Indian burial ground, yeah. So this could have been the, the spirits of, of uh, the, the the bodies that this place is, was built over top of, coming out and grabbing the fifty two and and sacrificing them to the Talladega gods. I I mean I, that's just my journalistic opinion. We see many cars coming to pit road. This is also going to probably help the 088 and 193 as they most likely take the wave around here to get back on the lead lap. If they weren't already. I don't know if they were... They had lost the lap yet, but I would assume so. So, I must have been wrong about the fuel mileage because they were hitting pit road really early there. Um, so, I, I'm assuming that their pit window is actually only maybe about 18 or 19 laps. Which, if that's the case, that, that turns us into a, another, at least a three-stop race from here. This race has got turned on its head again this evening. Yeah, that's, um... So just, just go ahead and add that into the shuffle of, of things that, that you have to think about when you're driving. Is Not only do you have to manage your runs, you have to, you know, work with your teammates, work with, with, with other drivers, but now you got to factor in fuel mileage, too. And 2.66 mile course, if you get it wrong, you're going to run out of gas before you realize it, and you're going to be left in, in no man's land. And while we're under caution here, traveling on lap 26 of 76 with uh, 50 laps remaining. Did I do that math correctly? I did. Yep, good so math, quick, Joe. Quick math, you know. Uh, we'll take another f fan question from the chat. Fightin' Chicken 26 writes in, would you rather be in first, second, or somewhere else coming to the white flag? Gordo, what's your response? Well, if it's coming to the white flag, I would I actually would rather be in the lead. And I know that's not going to be a, a, a popular answer, but there's a lot more variables that you can control if you're the lead car than if you're second or third. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm going to agree with you there, because especially, I, I feel like as a leader, you you can kind of work and see the runs coming from behind you, right? You can kind of see right. that outside lane if it's starting to form up to make a move Correct. on you. Yep. So I know at times I've done where I've, you know, you drag the brake a little bit to make sure that car behind you doesn't get far enough back where it can get a good enough run. Mm -hmm. As well as, you know, if you drag the brake a little bit, you're going to stack, not necessarily cause an incident, but you're going to stack those guys up behind you too so they're not going to be able yeah. to get those monster runs from being a, t a tenth or two behind each other. Absolutely. Absolutely, Joe. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, you you want to control the runs as much as you can. And, and, and if you're second or third, it goes back to that trust thing we were talking about earlier. You know, if you're second and you pull out and you need that guy to go with you, he could leave you high and dry and you're left out there twiddling your thumbs and wondering what could have been. And you go from second to seventeenth. Um, you know, it, it, again, I'd much rather be the leader going to the white flag because I feel like there's a lot more you can do as a leader to control the runs and and hold that position than if you were second, third, or further on back. Yeah, I, I think it's just it's a really interesting. It's a, it's a very good question because mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to differ for every, you know, I feel like if I, if we went down to that garage area before the race today and we talked to everybody, we'd have answers for every option in the field. There, there'd be guys that would want to be 30th coming to the white flag because they might yep. think that there's a huge wreck that they're going to be able to avoid because of it. Well, I'll tell you right now with that, with that ghost car that was, that was spinning down the backstretch, I wouldn't even want to be on the track right now. That was some spooky stuff, Joe. That was very spooky. It's not even Halloween. This isn't Hallodega. This is just Talladega. This I time of know. year. I think it's. I think it's finally those ancient Indian burial remains that are they're coming back and and reaping souls, man. 
gives you the heebie-jeebies. Biotech, uh, so NASCAR racing, this is, Talladega Super Speedway is one of the premier speedways on the circuit. Uh, NASCAR also likes to run what they call intermediate tracks, um, which are like a mile to a mile and a half. They also have two mile tracks that are speedways that are considered super speedways, and then they have short tracks, for, which are anything under a mile. Um, they also run road courses. Uh, so a, a lot of different uh, a lot of different course styles that NASCAR runs. And there's a lot of different series, too. These are the most powerful, uh, more modernized cars that you see the premier drivers in NASCAR running. They also have different series, like the, the Gander Outdoor Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, which are uh, more production-style cars rather than um, the, the cars you see on track right now. Uh, and then they also have their, their developmental series, the uh, the Menards Arca West and East, and uh, what's the other Arca series called? I think it's just called just the Arca Menard series, which okay. does which does the whole country. So like the West series yeah. is based west side of the United States yep. and the East, and so on. Yep. But yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. a lot of you know you have the stereotypical they only go in circles. Most tracks are counterclockwise circuits with uh, two sets of two left hand turns, but Yep. That it's more about the length of the speedway because if you have a shorter track, you got those lower speeds, but you also have a lot more to do with your feet. You know, you're using your brake to help you turn in the corner, similar to like yep. even a road course type of car. Um, but a stock car can be especially tricky at uh, circuits that are a little tighter, a little slower, just because it's such a heavy piece of machinery. So right. I mean, tonight is usually considered one of the easier tracks, although uh, after that first incident early on in the race, I don't think a lot of these guys would say this was an easy race by any means. Yeah, nothing's looking too easy so far in this race. But That's for sure. They go to some of the most, uh, some of the premier tracks in the world. And just an update on the uh, 16 of Murata. He has pulled his car behind the wall. Uh, so unfortunately, his night is over. He's actually already joined us in the chat on our Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Johto2. We go live every Tuesday night with the Mountain Dew Dash series. Cars are doubling up here, getting ready to go back to green. 21 leads us down. We got the 109 on the outside. Be interesting to see what that 109 does. We have not seen him up front at, at all, actually, tonight, so... Got some different different faces running up towards the front as 21 gets a great launch off the restart. I don't know what happened to the rest of the inside line. I think the 97 might have more damage than he thinks he does. Yeah, he's holding the whole field up right here. They're going to split them three wide. Yep, you got the 088 and the 93 working together there. They were the two guys that got popped for speeding penalties on that last, that last green flag pit stop. If they can work together, there's a car we haven't seen too much of tonight. The 15 of Matt Watkins. I feel like he's kind of he's he's obviously one of those noble guys, and he's probably taking it a little easy, especially after that first incident. He's in a really good spot here. He's running third out of the noble drivers. Yeah, I I'd say he's probably running as the 088s going back on pit road. I'm not sure what happened there. He he must have either passed somebody on the restart or. Has another speeding penalty he didn't serve yet? I don't know, but... Um, Could also be an issue that, with league officials maybe finding something that they didn't like on that last pit stop that they did to the that's car. That's very possible, but uh, that's unfortunate because that's going to really put a damper on his run tonight. Um, he did show a lot of speed early on, but he is doing a pass-through penalty, so he will merge back onto the track here. Well, we had um, aggressive bump by the 388 on the 59, almost set the 59 screaming towards that inside wall. Yeah, these guys are good. You're going to start seeing a little more aggression with the bumping. I mean, we uh, granted, we are not at halfway yet in this race, but these guys are starting to realize that the field's dwindling down. They're going to have to start doing more work on their own rather than relying on teammates or other cars to make the work, you know, make the moves for them. It's good. And it, we talked about it the last run, the field, yeah, the field thinning out, and it's 
even thinner now. It looks like we got about five cars or so that are really competitive. And then you got like the second group of four, which are gonna looks like they're gonna start coming up onto that five. But less than ten cars battling for this win, most likely at the end of the race. Yeah, and, and this is where if I'm the spotter of these drivers, I'm telling them, look, you know, work with the guy in front of you, but just just wait in line. Don't don't make any abrasive moves. Don't don't junk your car up right now. Right now is the point where all you're trying to do is get to the finish. And if you get there, you're, you've got a, a pretty much a 10% chance of winning this race right now. So um, it, it's it's very easy to take that 10% and, and change it to zero if you decide to make a dumb maneuver right now. So easy. because So again, these guys, they're getting these huge runs in the draft down the stretch, off the corner. You see the 388, he is right on the bumper of the 59. I don't know if I'd be doing that, especially because the 18 is giving him some extra room there. Yeah, see right there, that, that move where the 59 pushed up the hill and the 388's right on his left rear. That's how he caused an accident on the on these kinds of racetracks. Um, fortunately, that did not happen right there. But you just keep your eye on that because that's, that's what causes the big wrecks is you get a guy get a little out of shape and Another guy's pushing it on, on, on their inside or on their back bumper, and the, the, the two spots meet up, and they don't really line up very well, and that's how, the, that's how the accidents get caused. Well, and how was the complexion? You know, we saw that spectacular accident to start the race, and then we saw the witchcraft off of two. What would an accident look like now as they're running single file and maybe being a little more careful with what kind of moves they're taking? Um, you know, I, I think at this point, if you're lucky... When you're when you're you're single file like this, and you're getting bumper to bumper. If you're lucky, you spin to the inside and lock it down. Don't hit anything. Um, now, unfortunately, that also runs the risk of not having a caution come out, and you have to limp it back to pit road with with blown out tires. But um, I could see the possibility of of a transfer bump, meaning if a car is behind another car and the third car in line bumps the second car into the, into the car that's leading this, the train that could cause a chain reaction of a car getting hooked. Um, and that could lead to another not big accident, but at least a two car accident. Well, and what you're really seeing now is maybe save for that, that 388 being really aggressive. It looks like, but a lot of these, they, they are giving, you know, a quarter of a car length, half a car length to that car in front. Yep. You're seeing a couple guys hitting that apron through the corner. Do you think that maybe some of these guys should start considering running a little bit higher, trying to lead that line up towards the wall? Yeah, I, I definitely, I would, if I were these guys, I would run, I know the, the lower line's the shorter way around, but the outside, if you run a little higher, um, you know, these, the aprons here, they'll, they'll come up and grab you if you're not careful. And uh, you could lose control of your car. And that's what—that's another factor that could lead to big accidents. Um, you know, if you run a little bit higher up, it, it stabilizes the car. Um, it'll help you control that spacing a little bit. Um, so yeah, if I'm if I'm the leader, I'm dragging this line up to the outside. And if nobody goes with me, I'm not going to sweat it because I know that there's probably going to be another accident. And as long as I can keep my nose clean, I'm going to guarantee myself a good finish. I mean, you see, you kind of, you can see, the, like, the snake almost as we go to our camera on top of the uh, grandstand on the front stretch. You kind of see the snake starting to form where the, everyone's kind of, you know, moving back and forth, back and forth. Well, what I what I definitely see is this 388, I think, is feeling like he's he's got a good car and he's getting awful racy because he keeps poking his nose out and he's giving these transfer bumps to the 59 and... I, I, I like the aggression, you know, don't get me wrong, but man, it's still, we're, we're just now getting to halfway in this race. Yeah, we're on and lap 37. I, yeah, so we're, we'll get the cross flags at the line, and I just don't know what you're accomplishing being this aggressive this early. Well, he's probably, as you look at the numbers on the side of that car, he's probably trying to channel his inner Dale. Well, I would think. He might be channeling his inner Dale, but I'm sure he doesn't want to end up like Dale at the end of this race, so... He needs to kind of cool it on the moves a little bit. But again, easier for me to say because I'm sitting here in the booth, you know, kick back with with a with a nice beverage in the air conditioning and 
And uh, I don't know why I have the air conditioning on. It's not that not that hot out, but uh, you know these guys are, are in a heat of battle on track, and and they're doing a great job. And who knows, you know, his aggression now could pay off later if this thing starts going yellow flag after yellow flag. You know, he mm -hmm. it, again, I, I definitely think it's easier to be out front and block the runs coming than it is to create the runs. Well, especially with this few cars, you know, it seems like everyone's trying to starting to have a really hard time trying to create runs. You see the 388 starting to back off right as we're, say, he needs to calm down, he calms down. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just... Oh, my. I don't know what these... They're, they're bouncing off the apron on the front stretch. I, I know they're, that, that, you know, that, one of the common misconceptions at Talladega is the uh, it's easy to get around here, and it's not. There's, there's some spots where there's some bumps and where the... The trial will kind of change his banking where you could very easily lose control of the car. Well, we saw an incident in the um, Tuesday race here where a car had hit the apron just barely and it ended up sending him way around up into the wall, across the field, everyone piled in. At this point, if something like that happens, we could be down to three or four cars at the end of yeah, this race. And that's certainly nothing that we're rooting for at this point because, you know, we, we don't want to, we don't want to, to have the fans not get the finish they want to see here. This is Talladega. It's it's been been the site of many historical battles and many rem remarkable finishes and and uh, I I'd, I'd hate to see a maneuver now cost the the fans a chance of seeing a great finish to this race. Well, I can remember a race a few years ago. It was a truck series race that I participated in. I was leading, you know, in that position I want to be in. And, of course, I look down at my fuel gauge, and my fuel gauge says, Oh, you're going to run out. Oh, man. And coming through the trial, well, man, I ran out, and I was lucky that I had a guy pushing me that I really trusted in that event to where he he just kept push. He pretty much pushed me across the line. I ended up finishing third or something. Yeah. And we were too wide, and that was the scariest feeling ever through that trial with a guy right on your bumper. I can only imagine yep. what it's like. When you actually have fuel in the car and you're going 190 miles per hour through yeah, that turn, and that, and that's the most helpless feeling in the world is when you're leading a pack or you're leading a group of cars, and you you don't have the control that you need to have there. I mean, like I said, yeah, I do want to be the lead car of a pack, but if if you've got guys behind you that that work together better than you do with the guy behind you, they're gonna make the move, and there's nothing you can do other than throw it up there and hope you block the run. And if you get it wrong, you're going to be nosing the fence. And unfortunately, that's happened a lot more times than I can than I can remember off the top of my head right now to me, uh, where you you try to to capitalize on a run that's coming and you and you do it too late, and the next thing you know, you're you're walking out of the infield care center wondering wondering what happened to your car, you know. So, but. Yeah. I'll tell you, this is one of my favorite tracks. Um, it, it's always been a, a good track to me. I've had a lot of great finishes here, but I've also wired up a lot of race cars. So uh, it's it. Even your best drivers are gonna are gonna have their struggles at Talladega every once in a while. As we're starting to see a three car breakaway for that lead, the 388s kind of slowed down. Don't know if maybe his tires are maybe doing something he doesn't like. Maybe they, they don't have the grip in them anymore. Keep seeing the 109 ducking high um, through well, the center and, of the corner. And, and what I what I wonder is the car that's behind the 18. Um, he was right in the thick of things in that first caution. I'm wondering if he may or may or may not have gotten some damage in that. And that's not allowing him to push the 388 as hard as one of these other contending cars could. I think that's going to be a really interesting point too. As we click down the laps, we're on lap 43 of 76. Um, what kind of pushers are going to be left at the end of this thing? We saw after those pit stops, everything got really strung out, and if it continues like this as we're coming up on our second set of green flag pit stops, mm -hmm. um, if we get strung out, is there even going to be anyone to help you make a move to win the race? Yeah, it's uh, your your quality pushers are few and far between at this point. Um, I think right now the 21 is definitely the class of the field. Uh, he was able to make it through all the wrecks and and has shown a lot of speed so far during this race weekend. Um, if you can get hooked up with him, I think you're going to go places. But, yeah, I just don't – I I think your top four right now are probably your best bet to be good pushers. I'm just wondering if the 18 has some damage that we don't know about. Um, 
You know, the 93 still seems to have a little bit of speed. Same with the 15, but again, I think the 15 was was part of that first wreck, or he uh, he may not have been actually. I'm not sure. He may have been behind the wreck, but it's it's interesting, like you said, to see this three car train break away, and this four car train, actually five car train, is hooked up, and they really can't make any any time up on them. Yeah, as we're, you see the point standings coming into this race on your screen, it's all but certain now that the 21 of Craig Meyer will win the championship as we have cars coming to pit road. Yep, guys are coming in. Now he's out, out there alone. Is he starting to worry? Uh, I would be, because now you don't know where the run's going to come from. No, the one saving grace he has is it looks like the 18 uh, and the 388 have kind of unhooked from each other, so that double file is going to help help the 21 be able to outlast the run for at least another corner, but here they come now off of two. Well, it'd be in, it's interesting to see, too. They might just stay behind him here, po possibly coming to pit road this lap. Yeah, I know this group This group pretty much pitted together last time. Um, so I'll, I'll be curious to see how clean they get on pit road. Remember, we had the 16 uh, plow into the wall on, on his pit road attempt earlier, so... 21's you know, going to be coming. Oh, 21's coming He's solo. He's pretty much all by himself. We saw that 028 have the issues. But the 028's coming in way too hot. And He's going to have... He's definitely going to have a, a speeding penalty there. That is not what you want to see there for the... Uh, for yeah, the... That's, and that's not what the 21 wants to see there because that was, that was going to be his meal ticket to try to get back... blend back into the pack and now he's got to do it solo. Now we also talked about how he probably has the best car remaining. Oh, we have caution on track. We have a caution. Yes. Uh, I'm going to have to find who it was. It looked like the 109 may have been off the pace, but I don't know if that's what the issue was. Yes, it was the 109. Looks like he was trying to get up to speed and caught that, that little bit of a... Uh, and Like I talked about earlier, the difference in the banking. He caught that separation in the banking... On this car out while he was trying to warm his tires up. Well, it'll be Thankfully, also interesting to note uh, that 59 merged too early here. What the officials? Oh yeah, yep. end up doing. It was scrut it was scrutinized in the drivers' meeting that you must merge, you must blend back into the racing line coming off a of turn two, and if you pulled up early, that was going to be a black flag. So, yeah, I'm with you, Joe. I'm, I'm curious to see if that'll get called on the 59. And that's another one of your cars that was in that, that top three that we said had a lot of speed left. You know, that, a lot of interesting storylines starting here in this in this this third caution of the evening. So we've seen it all tonight so far. We've seen the solo caution. We've seen a tornado appear on the racetrack. We saw the big one early on. What do you think's next? Well... Barring an alien abduction, um, I think the only realistic one we have left is when we get down to the closing laps of this thing. Um, I, I still am just looking for. I hate to single out one guy, but I, I just I I've got a feeling the 388 may throw it in there a little too a little too hard on a bump, and that could end up widening up the field. Um, now I could be wrong; it, it could not happen, but. Um, I just think there's going to be some some bad bumping that goes wrong, and it's going to end up causing a a massive pileup that's going to change the complexion of this race. So we see every all the leaders coming to pit road. Did the uh, 21 end up losing a lap there, or did he maintain the lead lap? Uh, I believe that's a good question, Joe. I. I have to go back to time and score and to figure that one out for you. He, he just pit with the leader, so I'm assuming then he's still on the lead lap. So, really yeah, got point, saved by that caution yep, there. Yeah, at the point. Well, at the point of caution, he was actually on pit road when it when it happened. So, I don't think, I think he, he hadn't was, been he lapped saved, though. No, he had not been lapped. So, if anybody if anybody is thankful for that caution, it would be the 21, because I don't I just don't see how he would have been able to keep up with the field uh, or have a chance to win this thing. So it looks like he's looks having like issues he's, on yeah, pit road. Some issues on pit road. I'm not sure what's going on there. They weren't pitting the car there for a second. They they were getting a little angry at no, him, maybe. I think, I, I, think, I think what happened was he actually pulled across the air hose there when he got on the, on the pit road and it jammed up the, the, the uh, air wrench. So he had to go back and 
uh, back up, allow the allow the, the crew to pull the cords out so you could change the tires there. So, thankfully, under caution, don't lose any time there. So, you know, he's going to restart about the same place he was going to restart to begin with. So, it's uh, not 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 a huge loss for him. As we ride around under caution here. So at this point in the race, Joe, you look at the laps. We've got about about 29 laps left in this thing. Um, what what's your mindset here? What do you what are you what are you thinking as a driver? First thing I'm thinking is I'm yelling at this crew chief, telling me, "Am I going to need to save fuel here on this next green flag run?" I'm assuming we're coming down pit road when we get the one to go, um, or before we get the one to go. As I'm assuming we're going to see a lot of lead lap cars do that. But as a driver, that that's my main concern right now is do I have to try to make another green flag pit stop? Because we've seen it be very difficult throughout the race for a lot yep. of these drivers with the, either speeding or locking up the tires and hitting spitting because of that lockup. So that that's my main concern is if I'm going to have to yep. come back to pit road. You see everyone hitting pit road here. Yeah, I, you're, I mean, you're definitely going to have to pit again here. And I just, I feel like with so few cars left in the field, it's going to be nearly impossible to save save fuel on the racetrack without losing the, the lead pack. Um, so I, I just, I feel like you just have to let the race run its course, try to save as much as you can on pit road or on, on uh, the, the pace laps here on the yellow, uh, and then just kind of let the race take its course from there and, and, uh, you know, just pit your one last time like you have to. Um, if there was a, if there were more cars still left in this thing and, the, and there weren't as many damaged cars, I would say go for it, you know, drop to the back and clutch and save as much as you can. But, hey, uh, but it, it's just not, not going to be a possibility in this race. Did you hear, the, hear all the cars clutching as they come off a of pit road? It's going to be interesting to see what shakes out here. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in here on JTN to tonight's broadcast of the TDR BladeNode.com Premier Cup Series. Uh, this series runs every Saturday night at uh, roughly 10 o'clock uh, with knockout qualifying happening at 9.45 if they are over their entry threshold. Uh, they also do these No Bull events where if you donate a small fund you can win a larger fund uh tonight we had obviously the third or the 12 drivers numbers that you see at the bottom of the screen we had an early incident that took out most of these drivers um right now if we were to update noble the 18 of robert balcom would win 75 dollars uh, as he is not in the lead if he were to win the race he would win a hundred dollars out of the 185 dollar pot to uh going towards the noble five Yep, that is correct. You see, again, they're going to come to pit road. I'm telling you, there's, there's someone's going to try to stretch it to the end, even if they can't make it, because we're going to be going green with about 26 laps, 25 laps left. I just don't see how you're going to be able to make it, Joe. I mean, I, I was, my math was wrong earlier with the 27, 28 laps. I, uh, it, it's actually probably realistically about, about 20 laps that they're able to make it, and I mean that would take a lot of saving to get to that point. Well, could it also be that they're maybe thinking about only having to take a splash as opposed to half a can of fuel? Well, that's possible, too. I mean, you know, it, at this point, all bets are off. I mean, you've got so few cars left that are that are competitive, uh, and I hate to use that word, but it's, it's the truth. You've got a lot of damaged race cars out there, so their pushes are not going to be as good as, say, they were at the start of the race. Um, so you, you kind of sort of have to throw a pit strategy out the window and just race this thing to the finish. Um, you know, it, and I'm, I'm banking on at least another caution, if not two cautions, because the, the aggression is going to pick up again here. I've got a feeling, so. Yes, you're going to have new players at the front of the field, or at least one new player. The 59er Ryan Johnson will be leading us back to the green flag. Uh, the 388 is going to be right behind him in second. Uh, because here at TDR, uh, lapped cars do line up with the leaders unless it is under 10 to go. So the second place car is that 388. Third is the 028 of Monte Keller. And then Brian Wolf is 15th. They're lining up on the inside of row three. Why Mike Wiley is 
13th. 13th. All right, we got to look all up got, and down the sheet here. I was going to say, they got they got a jumbled mess of their of their starting lineup here, but we'll, we'll figure it out once they get going. <laughs> but then after, once you see the 21 of Craig Meyer, that him on back is pretty much lead lap yep. vehicles. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's going to create a very interesting twist here on this restart is you're going to have guys up the front that, let's face it, they're going to be off the pace. So these guys are going to have to dispatch these slower cars to be able to keep up with the with the lead too here. It's, uh be interesting to see on this restart if the 59 does get a black flag for that merging penalty that you were talking about potentially. I completely forgot about that. Because in theory, he would have had to take an end of the longest line if that were that, to happen under caution. Yeah, in, in theory. As I'm As not sure. 109 what. gets a great restart. 109 gets a great start. I don't know what the 59 was doing there. He may have spun his tires a little bit, but could he have possibly know. fell asleep after running those caution laps? I mean, look, your, your legs start cramping in the car, and sometimes you can't reach that pedal and, and get it to go. So that could have happened. But now we have a, a new leader in the 028. First time he's led this race all night. So well, we thought he had yeah. steering issues earlier. Yeah, it looked like his steering his steering column locked up on pit road. He was having a heck of a time leaving his pit box. So whatever issues they were having, it looks like they fixed. But uh, we'll see. An inexperienced driver, uh, or as far as this broadcast is concerned, leading the field now. So we'll see what happens here. Well, and again, that draft will be the great equalizer. The 109 is leading this line, but again, he is uh, last car on the lead lap at this point. Yes. So... He would be running about 11th or 12th? Uh, yeah, about that. About that? <laughs> uh, but... I'll tell you what, a new player we have up here in this this, this top uh, top group here, the 66 of Blake McCandless, uh, has not been around the front since the start of this race. He was caught in that first accident. He's been kind of running his own race in the back, but now, now the chips are, are starting to come down. Uh, he has raced his way back up in this lead pack and, and has a shot to, to get up there and win this thing. Well, and as I look at that car, it is... It's a beaut, isn't it? <laughs> it's something. It's definitely something. You got a Dodge Challenger with Prius and Toyota on the side and a Dale Earnhardt paint scheme. There's look, nothing more why, America about that. Right. Why, why love on uh, one manufacturer... When you can love on them all, okay? There's no Ford stuff on there. Well, you know, let's just let's just be honest. I mean, let's just be honest here. Not really a Ford guy, but I'm gonna stay whoa, biased. Whoa, whoa! I'm, I'm gonna stay unbiased. Let's let's call the action, Joe. Let's not talk about our preferences and, and manufacturers. See uh, the 029 of Ryan Wolf on the apron and had to come to pit road. Yeah, for... had to come to pit road. Yep. So he he'll merge back onto the track there on the back stretch. I'm telling you, as... these guys are trying to save fuel. He... All of a sudden, the 388 is not on the bumper of the car in front of him, and that is definitely a little weird sight to see. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I, I mean, am I patched down into his headset or something? Because he, he, he all the first run of that race, he was he was very aggressive, and now he's taken to a very uh, conservative, very passive route as far as how he's running this race. It's just. It's really interesting to see the philosophy of a driver change throughout a race, too, depending on, you know, what happens with their car, what happens with other people's cars, even what happens between drivers. You know, sometimes you're running and, you know, you're racing, you're racing, you're working really well with a guy, and then all of a sudden he does something that just makes you so angry that you tell yourself, I'm not working with that fool ever again. I'm not working with him because I just can't, can't trust him, even though you trusted him for 50-something laps earlier in the race. Well, it looks like this outside line is definitely trusting the 66 as they've got a run coming up. Oh, 88 the having some transponder issues. Yeah, he's got a little trans, but it looks like he's fine. It looks like they've worked themselves out as they race down the trial. But the 66 is now pulled up right next to the leader here, getting a huge push from the 93. Be interesting to see if we see our first Dodge Challenger as the leader here. Looks like he's grabbed that lead away here through the corner. Yeah, I think the one thing hurting that inside line is you do have that lap car leading, or tail end of the longest line leading that pack, and unfortunately, I, I just don't think his, his pace is up to par with the rest of these guys leading the pack as they go zooming by down the back stretch. Well, we also have in that outside line a new leader in our Noble race. Matt Watkins in the 15 is now in position to win the uh, largest majority of the money. 
Yeah, so I guess I guess what I was saying earlier about whether or not he was in the accident, he may have just been uh, he, he was playing possum on us there because here he comes. Not not like I said, we're getting in the second half of this race. You got new faces coming to the forefront and, and they're pushing hard here. As we complete lap fifty five here, fifty six, we're on lap fifty six, we'll have twenty to go next 20 time go. by. Blake McCandless, your new leader. That car says 66, but it is the 166 here at TDR, allowing these triple-digit numbers. Yeah, well, I think he's he's my new favorite to win this thing because I tell you what, he jumped on the outside there. And he shot out of a cannon and, and jumped it all the way up to the front. These guys behind the 109, they're going to have to figure something out to get up there and run with those guys because they're they're sorting it out now, but I, they they got to get on or else this train is going to pull away. We again like to apologize for the technical difficulties we are having with our lap counter. We're going to be completing lap 56 here. 20 to go. They will get the two sets of 10 fingers from the flag man. All right, you're the 15. You're going to try to start making moves to win this race now, or are you going to wait? I mean, he's played possum long enough. He, he might as well keep playing possum. I mean, it's it's not it's not quite time to make the move yet. Um. You know, I, I think, I think, again, I think we we have another caution coming up. Uh, you definitely have another green flag pit stop. I'm I'm assuming, uh, just judging by the fuel windows these guys have had. So I don't think you you have to make the move yet. I think he's sitting in the catbird seat because if the 66 and the 193 decide to get a little racy up here and take each other out, um, I think the 15 is is in prime position to pounce. And take over this lead. Well, as you watch the 93, he is up the bu back bumper of the 166. I mean, we haven't really seen this close of action between guys in a little bit here. Yeah, this well, single like file is going to stop soon, I'm telling you. Well, yeah, I, I, it has to. I mean, if you're if you're sitting in the top three or four, you're you're in a good spot right now. But if you're like Craig Meyer sitting in eighth, like you. You need to start making some moves to get yourself in a position to win this race. You're not going to win this race from eighth. You're going you're to have to put yourself in a spot where you can foreseeably pick off one or two cars. And if two guys get together and break their momentum, you have to be able to jump on that and, and, and use that momentum to get by both of them. But as of right now, um, you know, I think it'd be wise to stay single file. Uh, you know, you do have another pit stop coming up, so you got to factor, you know, filter through that. And then see where you are from there. It will definitely be interesting to see. As you see, the 166 of Blake McCandless is your current leader, with the 15 of Matt Watkins being your noble five leader. Uh, in second is the 193 of Rick Johnson. Third is Matt Watkins. Fourth is Robert Balcom. And fifth is Toby Robertson. And that's going to be a wild card there, too, is a 64 Roberson. I, I haven't seen him up towards the front much at all during this race. Um, you know, he, he's another one that could, could potentially... I'd like to apologize for that issue there with the stream. Uh, it sounds like someone in the truck had a couple issues maybe spilt a coffee but we're on lap 61 of 76 uh you didn't miss anything as we went to a blackout commercial break i tell you i'm i'm i'm, I'm so against these bring your kids to work day things i tell you I, it was actually our producer terry his uh his son knocked a coffee over on the control panel so we had to go clean that up but we are back we are still here uh, as we completed lap 61. We're on lap 62. Blake McCann is still your leader, followed by the 193 of Rick Johnson, the 15 of Matt Watkins, the 18 of Robert Falcom, and the 64 of Toby Roberson. At this point, you're at, you're at that pacing part of this race. These guys are feeling each other out. They're feeling out what their cars are doing. They're testing to see where they can get runs from. Obviously, if you're the second-place car, you got to keep yourself right on that, on that lead car because you don't want to create a gap there. But if you're the third place or fourth place car, you're backing off the corner entry a little bit, creating a gap, and you're going to get a run at them and see what your car has, where you can make the move, and you're going to hope and pray to God that when you make that move, the guy behind you goes with you. 
it will be interesting to see as everyone's starting to funnel back into our stream again we'd like to apologize for that incident we had some technical issues in the truck but the 166 of Lake McCandle still leads here at the Talladega Super Speedway so Gordo yeah. you're sitting here we're cut we're creeping up on 10 laps to go when are you gonna start when are you gonna make your move um if if I'm one of these guys again it just depends on where you are if you're sitting back where Craig Meyer or um or uh, Greg Lavelle are, you're going to start need to make your moves now. Um, if you're up in this front three or four, I think you've got a little bit of leeway before you have to make your move. You, you can wait until about five or six to go to make your move. Um, in the olden days with the, with the old Gen 4 cars, you would, you would want to wait as long as you can because you create these runs that were just enormous and you could get them from out of nowhere. Whereas with these Gen 6 bodies... It cuts the air a little differently to where um, the cars aren't as error dependent as they used to be. And um, so if I'm in that front three, I wait it out. If I'm towards the back, I'm trying to make moves now to make my job a lot easier when it comes down to uh, the winning time. As it looks like the 59 is ducking off on the pit road. Oh, the 109 coming with him. He came in real late there. Eight. Yeah, he did. He did Almost, not make pit road yeah. speed. Yeah. So this last portion of green flag stops. It's here. It's upon us. Are you taking it? Are you you got to be aggressive here, right? There's there's no way you're taking it oh, easy. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now now you have to you have to make sure that you get on pit road the, as fast as you can. You have to make sure that that your your pit stop is flawless. And, and the key is going to be how fast you can get off of pit road. That getting up the speed lap on the inside, on, on, the, on the apron, is going to be tough. Uh, not a lot of grip down there. you got the transitions and the banking as the, the leader comes up on the, the O3 here. little side note on the O3, uh, he was trying to get up the speed coming off pit road and actually lost it on the inside. But because he spun off the racetrack, it did not bring out a yellow. Um but there again, that's going to be a key factor in the end of this race. Is it's not so much how you get on pit road, but how how fast and how uh, blended you can come back off pit road. Because if you come out here as a solo as a solo duck, I mean you're you're done. You're not going to build any speed up, and your race is over. If you come out blended together, you got a chance to work together and make up any sort of gap that there is. Well, as we look, the 109 and 59 are right here ahead of our leaders. Now, if they can stay as close to these lead cars as possible, it'll work out the best for them because it'll help them lap back to the leader's pace. Uh, if they do get lapped, they need to make sure they can latch onto this lead group. Otherwise, they're going to lose very valuable time as the 109 will have to duck back in. Yeah, he definitely did not make pit road speed there. Well, we just saw the 21 also pull down the pit road. So Ooh, I'm not sure if the 21 made pit road speed either. He was looked like he was about maybe three or four miles an hour over by our telemetry, but... I don't know what we'll to wait and see on that one. See, it looks like the 15 and the 18 maybe made a little uh, too much contact there through the trial. We saw the 15 get a little squirrely. That's a good save on good save by him. That's that is the worst place on this track to get sideways other than the corners. Well, we're, that, that that transition to banking is is it, it'll catch you. Well, we're at 10 to go here, so these guys they will have to pit. So. You taking a splash? You're probably taking a half can or to a can here, most likely. I'm, I'm, I'm if it if it's my choice, I'm not even stopping the car. I'm gonna have the fuel man run out and run with me as he puts fuel in the back of this thing because I don't want to stop and and take up time as the leaders hit pit road. Looks like Looks everyone like made it clean, yeah. So this is key right here. These next 15 to 20 seconds are gonna be the biggest moments of this race for this lead pack. If they want to have a shot to win this, they need to get off of pit road cleanly. And they need to hope that nothing happens on these pit stops. You know, no gear jam up or no jam ups on the air on the air gun. Uh, you know, pull into your box, get all your tires, splash it, and go. And let's go win this race. Well, yeah, you're not taking any tires here. You're you're putting gas in. You're telling that gas man get over the wall, put plug in, plug out, get get out of my pit stall. You know, it, 166 wins the race off pit row. It looks like the 193 and 18 don't make contact. It looked like. Or might have made yeah, contact. It was, it was close. If they made contact, it was marginal. So hopefully it, w it won't help the air or it won't hurt the arrow on those cars. 
And a 116 needs to mine this gap that he's that he's creating on himself coming off a of pit road. Yeah, that's yes, a pretty big wanna, gap. You want to get that run off, but if everybody else is, is oh, as we see the 18 get a little sideways there, 15 too, they're all getting loose on the, on the apron, but it looks like they save it. And that's actually going to be a saving grace for the 66 as that creates a gap between these five cars. That's going to help him pull away a little bit. Well, and don't look now, but the 088 and 388, the, bro the Lavelle brothers, they're going to be lined up nose to tail here to try to make a run for the win. Yeah, and unfortunately, the 59, because he lost his drafting partner in the 109, having to pit, he's out here flying solo. He is not going to be able to catch back up with this lead pack. This is pretty much it. What we're looking at, you got the, the looks like about seven cars here. Uh, the 15 needs to get that pace going. He's got the 028 behind him, but he's got to catch this train or else they're going to leave the station. Trains leaving the station. Weird tornadoes on the back stretch. The big one on lap six. We've had everything in this race. You got two sets of two. It looks like three sets, four sets of two here. This 088 yep. and 388, they are nose to tail. The 388 is really pushing hard. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna close up this gap a lot quicker than anybody else as the 088 shoves the 388 into the corner. Um if I'm the 388, I go back to what I was doing earlier in the race. Now is when I would be aggressive. This is when you when you wanna make the moves to set your 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 adversaries up and put yourself in the spot to win this race. So we hit six laps to go here. There's six laps or seven, to go. Seven laps to go. Seven, sorry, seven laps to go. <laughs> You've got a four-car breakaway up front. The next three or four cars are kind of not not trained together here. If, if I'm these four cars up front, I'm telling each other, look, we need to get together and work together and get this train out of here before anybody else has a chance to suck up to us and, and try to steal this from us. When you see exactly that, they are pushing each other, building that lead off of the in front of the fifth-place car. Yeah, I mean, uh, the 028 and the 15 have now caught the 18, but they're going to need to crack the whip here to get up to this 21 to have any shot to get up here and win this thing. I mean, barring a caution, I think it's down to these four cars up front. Well, it's not even about winning the thing. It's about winning the Noble Prize. You have the 21, the 18, and the 15. They're all competing for Noble. Yeah. So I mean, for $75 on the line, because it does not seem like they're going to be able to get up to these leaders. No, so now it's now you have the dynamic of okay, do you want to work together here and try to push up to the front and try to put a little more money in your pocket if you win this thing, or do you settle amongst yourselves? I mean, it's quite the dynamic we've created here with with as we're coming to what four to go, five to go. It'll be five to go this time at the line. Did you see the he's shoving the eighteen through the corner right now? They're going to get to the twenty-one here. I, if I if I'm these two, I'm doing everything I can to get by this 21 because that's more money in their pocket. But as it, that looks like that's exactly what they're gonna do here. We have a pass pass for fifth place as the leaders continue to be single file. You see them at the top of your screen. But yeah, the 18 and the 15, they're gonna push right on by that 21. They they told them, you know what, you won the points championship. We're gonna go win what's important. We're gonna put a little bit extra money in the bank. Yep, the 18 and 15 have now pulled by the 21. Now the 028 is going to have to push the 21. And I I don't know. They're they're too gapped out. I don't think they're going to catch this four-car breakaway up front. Now let's focus on the leaders here. You know, you've got that, that noble dash for the cash. That's going on behind them. But up front, you got these four guys, four hungry drivers. you got Blake McCandless. Rode right around the back for most of the race. He's now up front. You've got the 193, who was the pole sitter for this event. He you've fell to the, the back multiple times, too, yeah, throughout the race. The 388, who was very aggressive during the first portions of this race, he's backed it off. Now he's turned the wick back up. And you've got the 088, who has served a, a speeding penalty, who who has you know had transponder issues, has had a lot of adversity in this race. And now he finds himself with a 25% shot of winning this race with, with four to go. So they work through three and four. They're going to be coming and get. They're going to get three fingers. Three laps remaining at this time. This time by at the line, the 166, 193, 088, and 388. Three or four triple-digit numbers here at the front. It's going to. I don't know if that 193. He's been very 
committed to the bumper of the 166 here as we've gone throughout the race. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm calling it, but, but I have a feeling that that 193 is going to wait till the absolute last moment that he can to make his move here. Yeah, you've seen it numerous times, and, and we can't say it enough, even though I don't think we've mentioned it, but the start of the broadcast... Oh, the they're making a move to the oh, outside. They are, they, they are making the move. The Lavelles are getting together here. They're still trying to push, and the 166 and McCandless has to be loving what he's seeing in his rear view. Well, I wouldn't, because now here they come with a huge run off the top of the, the, the speedway. It's, oh, the 193 makes the move. <laughs> 388 does not go with him. He's going to get drop kicked to the back of this pack. So we're going to be getting two to go this time at the line. So there you go. All bets are off. Nobody's friends with anybody. <laughs> Brothers are fighting with each other. As, oh, big shot going into one. I don't know how the 388 didn't get out of, out of sorts there. As the 193 falls to the back, maybe he wants to be in fourth at this point. 388 goes to the outside, goes to the inside. He looks like he's gets to the outside. They push the 088, pushing the 388 to the lead here on the second to last lap. Now the oh, 193 goes down to the 166. We're two by two for the lead as we go through three. And of course, we had to say that there wouldn't be tandems, and these are as close as we're going to get to tandem drafting here. Coming through the trioval for the second to last time here at Talladega. Just a quick update on the dash for the cash. You got the 18 still leading the 15. 21's peeking out, but he's got no help. Well, he's got a little bit of help from the 028. But not enough to make a difference. Yeah, white flag in the air. We're going through one and two for the second, for the last time. 388 on the outside. 166 on the inside. Will will we see one last crash here at Talladega? And also that lap car, the 109, goes to the inside. Will he help that inside line? I was going to say that 109 might be the difference maker here. you got two cars that are, that are trying to push each other. And they're stalling out. They're getting side by side, and they're stalling the run. This 109 could be the decision maker as far as what line goes. He ducks to the inside. As the 166 looks like he'll go, he's going to clear the 388. It'll be interesting to see if he pulls up off the corner. You see him coming off of four for the last time through the trial of the start finish line down at the other end. The 088 oh, goes to the inside, him. and Blake McCandless. We'll cross the start finish line first and win. Oh, we got a crash! Oh, huge crash right at the start and finish line. And it looks like the 18 is going to win all yep. the money. 18 is going to take home the dough. Followed by the 15. 21. And Lord knows who else from there. I think they're all sitting in the garage. But what a finish there. Great win by the 66 of Blake McCandless. Um, you got to give credit to the 388 and the 088 trying to hook up there to win that race. But at the end, it just, it just did not work out for them. And... Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of torn-up race cars this evening as well. Well, let's watch the replay of the finish here. You see the 088 just gets up into the 388, and it just it's on from there. It's going to be an awkward Thanksgiving uh, come November. 193 took a hard lick there and just... Well, hopefully they'll be able to get together for Thanksgiving. You know, with the social distancing, that's not a, a definite thing. You see Blake McCandless doing donuts here. He is your winner at Talladega in that in that car, that 166 car. <laughs> I just have a hard time looking at that, man. Anyways. Well, he, I'll tell you what, he did, a, he did a great job tonight. He drove the wheels off, and he, and he, and he played possum. Uh, the right amount of time, put himself in the position that he needed to be in to win that race. As he'll do a, a Polish victory lap to wave to all the non-existent fans as we are practicing social distancing here at Talladega. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. We'd like to thank the TDR Racing League for having us on board uh, to broadcast tonight's uh, Blade Node dot com premier cup series event at talladega um, obviously congratulations to the 166 of blake mccandless on winning the event and also to our noble winners our noble five from this race they are uh the 18 of robert balcom the 15 of matt Watkins, the 21 of craig meyer the 98 of mike wiley and the 03 of james moore do i have that correct you have that correct congratulations guys they will all be taking home some money 
in this order, 75, 50, 30, 20, and 10. So everyone's making some money off of this race, or at least out of those five. What are your last thoughts, Gordo? Uh, overall, an entertaining race. Uh, we had a little bit of everything in this. Uh, again, you know, the only thing I think we were missing tonight was an alien abduction. Uh, so I had a lot of fun watching it. I was glad to be a part of the booth. And, uh, yeah, congratulations to Blake. And also a big congratulations to all the Noble 5 guys for, for, for profiting money tonight. So great job all around and uh, pleasure being in the booth with you. Yes, as always, it's a pleasure to have you up here. Uh, we appreciate everyone for tuning in this evening t for the presentation of the TDR Premier Cup Series. My name is Joe Twansky. I have been had Alex Gordon uh, at my side throughout this event. We would like to, again, thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope to see you Tuesday night for the Fast Dash Series at Dover right here on Twitch. Um, can't wait for that event, and we will see you next time.